have brought in Julie Anderson from London and their worship team coming. It's, it's going to be glorious. Uh, and in, um, we talked about the three, let us, let us uh, draw near with a true heart, let us hold fast our confession of hope without wavering, and let us uh, consider one another to love and good works. All this is possible by the blood of Jesus, through the veil of his flesh, which was, means his death, his burial, resurrection, ascension, intercession. And it's um, all undisputable because he now is our high priest. He holds the place next to the Father, and he holds intercession, which isn't uh, just, you know, like, dear dad, please don't be mad. They really are good people uh, deep down below. They don't know. Help us. No, he's like, we took care of the sin deal. We, we dealt with it once and for all, one offering forever. All I'm here now to hold place is we're waiting for the complete annihilation of expressive enemies, terrorists of the kingdom to be under our feet, not natural terrorists, spiritual terror of the accuser of, the, of our enemy put under our feet. And the fulfillment of the promises that I've given them in, that were given them in me before the foundation world to be fulfilled. So I'm here to see them get glorified. And so I'm holding their prayers. I'm holding their promises. I'm holding their destiny. I'm holding their future. I'm holding their victory. And I won't let it go. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care, I don't care what's happening in that nation or, or, God forbid, America's politics. I am not moved by any of it. I'm not even interested in any of it. I'm interested in one thing. You have to understand this. If you're going to break free from what's trying to drown you, you've got to let go of what's shaking. Because everything that's shaking is going to shake. Earlier this year, middle first part of the year, I was talking to the Lord about the coming election. He said, pray for everybody because uh, it's just smart. <laughs> and then I was trying to probe him a little bit about, you know, what's coming and what, what, what is he going to do? And he said, you know, I'm really not that interested in who becomes president. But, but hold up, because that wasn't like an indifference. He said, what I'm really interested in is who understands who's the king. America does not need a better president. They need a revelation of Jesus Christ. And apparently, God decided it would be easier to see Jesus in the midst of what we're looking at. Because a lot of people are no longer looking at the political systems to save us. Which, okay, I'm going to wait. I won't wait any further into that. I prophesied 20 years ago that God would not save America through the politics because the church had assigned, aligned itself into politics. And... The only thing he saves the world with is Jesus Christ. And that will affect. The law will not make men better. Therefore, whatever laws are made will not make men to be like the laws. It'll just incite whatever the law says is not good. I still remember the day I was driving to Oxnard. It was in December. It was, a, it was going to be a Christmas party for a group in the church. It was going to be at one of the restaurants. On the, at the harbor, I'm driving over there, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm con uh, concerned. It's like probably 1998. I'm concerned about things in America. I remember it was America. And I said, Lord, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And he said, nothing. He said, I already did everything. I already did everything. And from there, my mind shift had to start to change. Okay, then what I'm lacking is a revelation of what you did. I'm lacking faith in what you accomplished. I'm lacking uh, experience in the victory that you brought. I'm lacking communication of who you are. I'm, I'm, out, of, I'm out of sorts. And, and really, in that setting, began a real renewing of my mind through life's circumstance. If you didn't get, uh, weren't here at the 9 o'clock service, go online and listen, because Diana did an excellent job of making sense of the senseless of trying to sort out what it is that's being contended over, what it is you're trying to hold on to, and what it is that God's about when, he, when you're in the mix of stuff. So 
the thing is, there's, there's three basic elements that you are and I am in Christ learning to love, value, and access and enjoy. The first is his presence. Everything he did was so that we could come in his presence. And Hebrews 10, 19 made a big point of that. The high priest could only go once a year. That was this Wednesday, Yom Kippur. But now we can come anytime, all the time, because and boldly into the very Holy of Holies because of his blood, because of his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and now high priestly intercession. And he's our high priest. We can come boldly and draw near to, his, to him with a true and honest heart, knowing we can't be kicked out. Because we didn't get in on our merit, we can't get kicked out on our behavior. It's got to work both ways, or it's just not a real gospel. It's it's Christ saves me so I can be a good person. No, Christ saves me so I can become like Him. And that is a much more radical transformation going on. So there's that presence, but then besides presence, because presence flows like like the sea and like the river and like the rain it it sometimes is massively all around and it's really easy to just know how much he loves me how, how wonderful my future is how great he is moving how easy it is to get healed how wonderful it is to be in 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 that fullness but then there's many times when that's being contended over the accuser's coming and i need promise because promise is is even uh, stronger than presence because promise is covenant and covenant is where we f- learn to, to, just, to know for certain this is who he is. That's why we have a confession of hope. Hope is, the prom- hope is the future that God has spoken to you about. Hope is the Bible that you carry in your, with you inside leather or on, inside your phone. It's, but it's most importantly the words you've heard over time because those words have become now your testimony and it is your victory. And the testing that's coming at you is after only one thing. It's the faith that the word brought you. So he'd like you to release the faith and give up the word. And once you give up the word and you release the faith, then you are just like, like a tossed about and thrown around and questioning God, does he love me? Because you don't understand the third thing is power. And the power is, is the Holy Spirit, but he's massively powerful so that our souls don't rule us, but they yield to the one who should rule us, which is Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit came the first time, Jesus said, you won't be able, even though you've been with me in presence and you know my words because I've taught you, you can't go bring this life to the world until you get power to die. It's not power to, to, just, to just push all obstacles out of your way, although oftentimes you will. But sometimes the, the, the soul, because the, the, the death of Jesus was to destroy him who had power of death, the devil, so that he could deliver us who all our life through fear of death were made slaves. Because when I'm afraid to die, I will hesitate and I'll back out. We won't be a public speaker because we don't want to be embarrassed. We won't step out into a new adventure because we don't want to fail. So fear of death is a real tangible captivity on humanity, on our dreams, on our hopes, on our aspirations. So we manage disappointment. We manage death. We keep ourselves in a safe place. And that kind of death was not only conquered at Christ at the cross and in his resurrection. He has the keys of Hades and death, Revelation 1. But he also has the distinct strategy to liberate my soul from its preservation, its mindset that says, I don't want to ever experience that. Or it's the soul of man is, is like it's a squirrely thing because we, we agree with God, but we don't, we, can't, we, don't, we, can't, we don't understand the process of freedom. So we will keep stopping God because we're trying to protect our soul. So we try to love our life, which life there is suke. It's that we're trying to protect our soul. And because we're trying to protect our soul, that's probably the last vestige of all of our battles. There are many in this room, you are presence-based believers. You believe in the presence. When you go to prayer, you have an experience. 
You enjoy the Spirit of God, the love of God. The, you, you're, you're, you're aware that there is a really unseen world and you're touching it through Jesus Christ. And many of you carry a lot of promise. And you've, you've had encounters. You've read your Bible. You've, you've got yellow all over it. You highlight this. You heard that. You've got prophecies. You've got journals. The problem is you don't believe them anymore. So you're not holding that confession. See, because resurrection life looks like two things. It looks like Jesus Christ raised from the dead and looks like your confession or sounds like your confession of hope. And God just so challenged me. I mean, I, I, it so challenged me that when I am with him, he says, I really want to hear everything I ever told you. I want you to tell me again. I want you to just tell me. I, I want you, and I'm going, that big? He goes, bigger. I want, I want you to expand your, I want you to tell me what I said because what I said is what I will do. And if you don't say what I said, then you really don't have the future that I have for you. You're disengaging, fully engaged. But you can do it in the presence. But now, here's the deal. The problem in those two places, which you, is, is, is really such an important journey, everyone. If you, can, if you can be a man or a woman who can access the presence and carry promise, you are indivincible. You, you cannot be stopped. Yet, you may not make any headway. Because your victory is internal. It's internal. Turn and look at your neighbor and say, you got to get the victory inside. you got to get the victory inside. Inside of you. When, you know when you have a victory inside, you don't need it outside. When you're in and it's in and you're there, you're victor you, you carry something. And that's where your training goes to because you have all the obstacles saying it's not going to happen. It never will happen. You didn't hear God. It's never going to be. People you're around, they're, they're hindering you. You've got to get a new crowd because the crowd you're with is keeping you from your destiny. Oh, this, this, all the stuff we'll think and try because we're desperately trying to get to our victory. But it's our soul that's driving us. And our soul's having to come to the understanding that love, which is the power of God poured out by the Holy Spirit into our heart, is larger than the life we're trying to save. You want to you you know how God teaches you about how much love he has? He says, I, my love is inseparable. You can't be separated from my love by, by death or famine or persecution or, or uh, principalities or things to come. Romans 8. And we read him and go, oh, that's so cool. He goes, yeah, but you don't believe it. How, how can I? I want to believe it. Okay, let me send you some persecution. <laughs> let me send you a little. Let, let, how about you meet one of, my, one of the principalities that are trying to reign. The, you know, and, you, and then you go through that thing and you realize nothing could separate you from my love. And once you know that, you're, in, you're, 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 you're free. Because now you know that, well, even if that's the course I walk through, I will walk in the midst of love. So presence, promise, and power. Let me just show it to you in Revelation 12. This is the end of the days, and this will be coming. And this is now is, and it's really, I'm going to look at verse 10, 11, and maybe 12. And then I want to pray. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. So in, in, evidently, there's dimensions of what salvation, power, kingdom, and authority of Christ look like or in display. Right? Last year, we got rain in California, Southern California but we are in a drought of rain. So we saw rain, felt rain, but we didn't get all the rain we need. Some of us have touched salvation. We've experienced a bit of power, which is the word strength, dunamis. We, we're understanding a dimension of the kingdom of God, and we even have recognized the authority of his Christ. The word power there is exousia, authority. So when you see strength, put the word power. 
And when you see power, you use the word authority and you'll have a good grasp of a fourfold imagery of, of the expression of the kingdom and God in the earth. Power, salvation, kingdom of our God, authority of his Christ. So we've, we've experienced a degree of that, but I would say we're in a drought. Would you? I mean, are we just like, you know, we're, we're thinking America is going to go a new direction by getting a new president. Or we're afraid America is going to go in an awful direction by a new president. The point is, God is going to change the nations by Jesus Christ. I'm going to vote. you got to vote. It's not a, I'm not talking about disengagement. I'm just talking about not being whacked all around by the natural world and living with some confidence. Dear God, your Savior has been, is seated in heaven. You have authority that he's training you in through presence, promise, soon to be revealed in great power. So, point is, for me, I've only touched salvation. I've had times where salvation has been great, times when it got diminished in my life. I've only touched power, times when there's been massive amount of power, times when there's little power. I've only touched the kingdom of God to some degree, but I'm not fully invested in that citizenry. And I've only touched the authority of Christ at times. But all of a sudden, in heaven, we hear the loud voice saying, Now! Salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. Now, come. Now, come. And here's the reason. For the accuser of our brethren who accuse them before our God day and night has been cast down. That so evidently, the accuser engaged in conversation, meditation, thoughts, imaginations, words, and such, has the ability to keep the kingdom from f expressing itself through our engaged in this accusation stuff. So how'd they do it? How did we get this thing finally dealt with? Where did we, how did we finally see him cast down? For they and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Presence. People who live with boldness, freedom, unchallengeable access, delightful enjoyment in the presence of God by blood. How do you learn that? You got to get majorly accused and mess up really big. You're going to have some proof to that truth. Amen. Your faith will get tested. Oh, yeah. You say, I'm so glad I'm here because of the blood. It's such a delight to be here. Father just delights in that sound. He embraces you. You feel the presence. He picks you up and hugs you. That's mercy. He stoops down and helps you. That's grace. He just goes, oh, I love it. But, but all of a sudden, you have to have Sister Sally whisper, so-and-so is doing such and such, and you're in big problems. Like little Noah at home said, you're in big trouble. <laughs> big trouble. And all of a sudden, your soul is imagining this and wondering about that, and what should I do, and what do I need to do, and i got to do something, i got to fix something. And all of a sudden, the suggestion is that it's something that's not proper and in order and divine delight, and God is now really going to leave America because of the elections. And you start following. You have to follow it. Why wouldn't you follow it? You love God. You love God, and your heart is toward him. So if someone is infer to you that there's something that needs to be done in order for God to be more delighted in you, you're going to do it. And you're going to do it a hundred times, if not a thousand times. But one of these days, you wake up and go, you know, every time I do whatever I've been told to do or told not to do or stop to doing, nothing changes. And even if I feel good about myself because I started getting into a new diet, soon that diet wears off, and I don't feel good about myself. So I've got to have some other reason that I'm access. access. It's got to, and it finally comes down to one thing, blood, atonement, substitution, access, freedom. You can't be cursed. You can't be sent away. 
You can't be told you're not wonderful. You are wonderful because you're in Jesus Christ. And it's something you're practicing. You, because again, if you don't practice the presence, the presence isn't going to be very tangible. It's whatever you practice, you'll become proficient in. You'll become accessible. You will know how to do it. You don't do things you're not good at. And if you don't have a desire to do it, you'll quit. So it's a practice. So they're overcome. They're becoming solidly assured of their place in Jesus Christ before the Father, accepted in the beloved, delighted in the Father, enjoying his conversation in and out and every day, and they can't think of another place they'd rather be. And they can go there anytime throughout the day, no matter what's coming against them. And no matter what, whether people like them or love them, whether they have made a mistake or not, they are welcomed, received, and delighted it, and they've decided this is the one place that I'm going to be every day. That's overcoming. Then, <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> it's like Holy Spirit trainer on that one. Then they overcame by the word of their testimony. Beautiful, beautiful imagery. Word is logos. So it's the sum total of everything. Testimony is where we get witness. It's the experiences you've had with God. Show me a man with an experience and he's not a victim of an argument. Dear God, we're just like brain people. When we need to be experienced people, people that are encountering God. I read my Bible today and the Lord spoke to me. Woohoo! Now, every time he speaks to you, he's going to lead you somewhere, and, and the journey of being led, you're going to be contended over. So there's times, trust me, you'll be like, oh, Lord, please, just, I've heard enough. Let's just, we, Cammie and I have prayed these prayers over seasons. Lord, if you just do this, that, and the other, we'll, we'll call it even. <laughs> you don't have to do any more of this stuff. Just, just say this. And he just, he will have nothing to do with that. You'll have nothing to do with that because your future is his voice, his word, his, his, what he has said. And therefore, that is your confession of hope. So when I get into presence and I practice with Jesus, I'm, be, I'm enjoying him. I don't take 10 hours, 10 minutes. I take there. Whoa. And I know that because I'm going through the blood and through the veil of his flesh. I love to enjoy acknowledging what that means. But I'm not hindered to access immediately. And then when I'm there, I be honest, have a conversation. I draw near with my true heart. But then I know what Papa wants. And I know he wants me to praise him to recalibrate my thinking about who he is, how great he is. And then he wants me to tell him how, what he's told me. And he wants me to boast about how great it is and how, comp how confident. And when I practice that, do you do it every day. That's what prayer is. I don't even know what anything else is prayer other than that. Because it's in the presence, acknowledging what Jesus has done, bringing to Jesus what he said, and join, joining in what Jesus is praying, which is what Jesus said, and holding a place of agreement. And just starting to say, Lord, we got this. You got this, don't you? You do have this. You are victorious. I will be healed. I will stand up. I will stand up. I will see the salvation. And, and you, you learn Meanwhile, you, your outside world is crumbling. Seriously, you, to be trained to be an overcomer, you have to be given extraordinary promises and contradictory circumstances. You got to be told the king, the, the, your brothers and your mom and dad are going to follow you and bow and, and serve you and then be sent as a slave. Because the promise has to have proven truth in your life that it is true irregardless of what you're experiencing. And eventually you'll enjoy it. I mean, sir, I mean, sir, I wish I could bring you into my prayer time because I'm like, wow, Lord, this is awesome. Here you are speaking into my life what you've spoken all, all over all of my journey of 40 years with you. You're still saying it with confidence, and, and now you're telling me it's performance time. It's happening time. And so now I'm all in this. You're able to do what you said. 
which is, and they did not love their lives to the death. Yes. Power. Yes. Power to be a witness. Power to lay down my life. Power to help somebody else. Yes. Power to get up. Power to move into forward. Because all the other issues have been dealt with in the presence and the promise. Right? right. I mean, the soul part is the... You, but here's the good news. Oh, so good news. The power of God is coming. And here now. The demonstration of Holy Spirit to alleviate some of, some of the pressures by bringing healing to the systems that have paid the greatest price. I, I see it. In, 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 there is a healing anointing right now present in this room at this moment on the Internet to revitalize and heal our very um, metabolisms. You know, they say when you're young, you can eat anything, and next thing you're old, you can't eat anything. Because <laughs> your metabolism is slowed down. It's not, it's not converting food into energy, energy into, it's storing it in places you don't want it. <laughs> there's coming, and now is, and there's a, an anointing to heal metabolisms. Some, of, some people here really have real medically recognized this is an issue, therefore you have to really restrict your life because of this issue. There's going to be healing. There's, in some cases, there's going to be weight loss. Tangible, recognizable weight loss. But then I heard the Lord say, but the metabolism that I need to awaken is not just the physical metabolism, there's soul metabolisms that are, that are now they're, they're sluggish. They can't... They can't process thoughts. It's, you know, it's not dementia. It's just they can't really entertain a new thought because the th old thoughts are all stuck. Someone might say I have constipation of the mind. <laughs> thoughts are stuck. He's going to re... There's just... How many would like to have the bewilderment of a child again? Yes. We have to be like children to enter in. I'm 40 years old in Jesus, and I'm more like a kid than I've ever been. I have more fun with Jesus than I've ever had. I have, he, we are inseparable. We're inseparable. I am a delight, and I show up, heaven never stops. It's not because I'm special. It's I've learned how to get a hold of the special one. The whole heaven stops for Jesus, and I just show up inside him. And there is same, but but that but 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 but, but the freedom of the thoughts, letting go. You got to dump everything that didn't work. Dump it, put it behind you, and let it go. And then cancel every debt anybody owes you in the spirit, soul, and body, to as much as you can. Free, 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 free. Unburden yourself. If you were running out of your house, we had this happen. Just simply illustrate unloading. We were uh, putting new carpet in our home. And uh, we thought we had a week to, to, till the carpet was laid, uh, going to be laid, and, laid, and we, w there was bookcases that we'd put up years before for the kids to store all the reading books. And we wanted to take them off the wall because otherwise the carpet would be uh, put around the bookcase because it had been done that way before. So that's a, I've got a week to do that. It's a Sunday. I'm informed... The carpet's going to be laid tomorrow morning. So I'm going home. Cammie and I are going, oh, oh, oh. And we're taking this bookcase, two big bookcases, and we're just throwing it in the boxes to the library, to the library, to the library. Let them all have it. Let them do with it. It's all a trash can if it's really not bad. Otherwise, we'll give it to the Camryl Library. Let them sell it. And then I'm carrying these boxes to the truck to take to the library. And each box is just super heavy. And all I'm thinking to myself is if this was, I had been told to leave my home and never return, this would not be what I would be carrying. <laughs> if this house was burning, this is not what I would be carrying. So all of a sudden, what had stayed in my, on our wall for decades had no value because I understood what it was costing me to carry them. But they were still costing me when they were on that bookcase. I just hadn't had it brought to my attention. See, that's what repentance is. It's just considering that you've been 
storing a bunch of junk. And you need to dump it because it's, it's, it's filled your hard drive and you have no place to store anything that's fresh and new programs can't run because your old programs are running in their place. That's repentance. That, and it's coming. A, superna a supernatural healing of, of the ability to process, to, to, trans to, to move the energies of, 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 of locked up thinking, which costs, you know, it is harder to live in unforgiveness than it is to forgive. It is harder to keep track of debt than it is to release it. It is harder to store junk than it is to throw it away. Studies show that if you go buy a storage box and fill it up with your stuff that's so important, and then one day you're going to use it, by the time you ever get to the point of using it, you could have bought it new for the amount of money you spent on your storage unit. Because it's just, we can't let it go. We live in purgatory, processing everything. So our whole metabolism is going to be renewed. And then our spirit. In the, the, you know, says, there, I, want, I have so much to tell you, Hebrews 5, the author said. It's about Jesus and the high priesthood. But I can't because you, you've grown dull of hearing and you're, you've gotten dull in your heart. Jesus said your heart turned into a rock. It petrified. Yeah, we go to church still. We observe the things we knew before and that were important. And, and no one would argue. We would not let someone tell us that we weren't a good Christian. But we're unbelievers. Hearts filled of unbelief. We can't just jump into the thing. We've got ourselves... Guarded and protected because our hearts are grown dull and hard and we can't respond and turn. There is an anointing. There is a power that is about to come to everyone. And starting right now. Right now, the Holy Spirit. Right now, the Holy Spirit. Right now. You say, why do you know that? Because he told me he was going to do this. Because he's going to demonstrate resurrection life to anyone who will receive it right now before we start. Because it's time. I'll tell you something. God never expected you would pass the test and come out without junk and trash and scarring and fat metabolisms. He knew you would slow down and get sluggish and shut down and stop. So he comes then to lift off that. And it's a supernatural moment. And then power starts surging. And then the testimony of the liberation begins to expand the sound of Jesus. And people come and say, I want to know this guy who liberated you. And it's, it's so attractive. So he actually prepares us. He takes us for our deliverance into Egypt. And then to make a witness for his name, he brings us out of Egypt. Some of you are still denying you're in Egypt. <laughs> Not me. Like the Pharisees. I've never been in bondage to anybody. I'm totally cool. I want salvation to come in the magnitude of the souls of Tarsus waking up. I mean, where it's nobody saying, oh, would you consider if you might enjoy letting Jesus have a portion of your thought life? Maybe he would have a little influence on your political decisions. <laughs> your, the way you run your business, the way you... No, he just wants to take over. Yeah. 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 And when he does, you're just going, go for it, go for it. But, it, when it, but, it, but he has to come in a, in, a, in a display that's larger than what currently can be communicated because of the filter of the accuser. Sitting there and telling everybody, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, you gotta go do this, you gotta go do that, don't 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 do that. And then while you try to do that, you say, oh, you're not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. Then you go, oh gosh, I'll never get there. Yes, that's right, you'll never get there. Hate yourself, hate yourself, hate yourself. And then we say, welcome to the world of religion. Would anyone like to join us? <laughs> Jesus is not into any of that. He came to undo all of that. So praise you, Jesus. Anointing's here. If, you're, if you would like or feel the pull 
the desire for your metabolism to be renewed, re to be healed, whether in your physical body, soul, spirit, heart, whatever portion. I just want you to stand up because I, I, we want to honor God's offer. Dan, if would you mind bringing the, just yourself or any, just, just for some worship? Now, beloved, I, I have the authority in Jesus' name to release this and give this to you. So it's coming. It's coming. But I want to also encourage you that every time we grow in the, in the faith, he gives us presence and promise to secure what he's doing. So we then acknowledge the presence and acknowledge the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has paid for every miracle that will ever come and every miracle you'll ever need. Every miracle has been paid for by Jesus. So I want you to begin to acknowledge Jesus. That he is your Lord and he is your Savior. Not like Cammie said, not externals, but internals. The truths of what you really need him to be, begin to acknowledge that Jesus, I do believe. You can change my metabolism. You can re redo my chemistry of my body. You can give me the renewed vigor to eat and digest food, to, to eliminate freely, to be whole. You can make my body young again. You can raise it from its place of, of, of its complacency. You can restore the flow of blood. You can cause healing to come to my limbs and to my eyes. You can restore hearts. Go ahead. If that's your job. I mean, it's Jesus would ask people when they asked him, do you believe I can? And they'd say, yes, I believe you can. So that's what you're doing right now. I believe. We believe. The power of promise is that some of us have already heard God said he was going to do that. So tell them, hey, thank you, Lord. I heard you say that already. I heard you say miracles were coming. Healing was coming. My body wasn't going to stay here. Thank you, Jesus. I heard you were taking me out of poverty and into prosperity. I thank you, Jesus. what Cindy was just doing right there, she was making a connection for herself. She was signing up, signing in, signing on. It doesn't have to be like that, that loud and beautiful. I love loud and beautiful, but it doesn't have to be. It just has to be intentional. Whoa. Okay, so here it comes. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the resurrected Lord and King, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Holy Spirit, who came with the power that is necessary to do and be complete everything that is required, I declare right now the miracle, the miracle of metabolism renewal, of processing, of food processing, nutrient processing, thoughts processing, emotions processing, lives processing, hearts processing. I declare and decree all impedances to loose and let go of God's sons and daughters now in the name of Jesus healing now healing now healing now healing now healing now healing 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 now receive your healing we're gonna worship receive pull Receive, receive, pull, welcome, knowledge. Show us, show us your glory. Show the glory of Jesus is seen in healing and resurrection life. The glory of Jesus. The Lord is restoring coverings, coverings, glory, coverings, even hair loss. <laughs> Hair is going to grow again. Bodies are going to function again. Come on. In the 
name of Jesus. Heal. Whoa. Heal now. Okay, one other thing you can do. Put your hands up like a funnel. And receive. Receive. This is best you know how. Consciously, intentionally, emotionally, intellectually, with the heart, with the body. Say, I'm receive. I want receive. I want to receive a renewal of my metabolism that all things come alive again. A whole total renewal. I want to lose 30 pounds, and I love it to be a supernatural. Come on, don't be so skeptical. Shabba. <laughs> you don't have to be skeptical. It's Jesus. He's a good God. He loves us. He's a kind and generous and powerful king. And if you'll reach out, oh, yeah. Come on. We want your glory. Make us examples of your kindness and mercy and goodness. Yeah. There you go. Pull. Drink. Come on. Your love is where Come on, come on in. Fill me up, yes. Fill me up. Fill me up. Come on, fill me up. Open up the heavens. Fill me up. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river. Fill me up. Yes? We believe He heals our bodies, yes? We believe He delivers our lives from captivity. We believe He can open eyes to see, right? Ears to hear, right? Hearts to understand. We believe He can resurrect our bodies by Holy Spirit. We believe. We've got nothing to lose when we believe. Because we're just stepping in to what He's done. So just one more time. Thank him. Receive from him. Take hold of him. Bless him. Acknowledge him. Thank him for healing you. Thank him for a new metabolism. Thank him for restoring. There's digestive tracts being renewed. There are heart, heart palpitations that are being dismantled. There are stress mechanisms that are breaking apart and losing their grip. There's a waterway breaking forth. There is a passage of life. Blood is circulating. Health is coming. Healing's coming. Now. 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 Coming. It's here. Take it. Go. Yeah. Go. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. Yes, Lord. Flowing from your heart, healing every part of our face. Ministry team, there's, there's 
movement of the Spirit. And if anybody in our ministry teams or ministries, come on up here. Because people are having things happening. And they might want a prayer of agreement. You feel something happening and you go, whoa. By this time next weekend, God's going to wreck the devil in your life. And he's going to establish his rule and freedom. And we're going to have testimonies because Jesus is Lord, good and glorious. So right now, Heavenly Father, I'm going to close so you can go home, but just catch this. If you were, you're going to make sure you got your purse. You probably want to make sure you got your phone. You probably want to make sure you got your Bible. I want you to make sure you got your miracle before you leave. I want, you to, I want you to take hold of it and pick it up and put it in your heart. I want you to intentionally say, Lord, I believe that I can receive and have received this, what you said to me or done before me. It, it doesn't have to be what I said. It has to be what he said. Just receive. Just receive. Collect your miracle. Collect the working. Now you got it? So just thank the Lord for it one more time. Thank him for movement. Thank him for power. Thank him for power to dem destroy the works of the devil. Thank him for power to come and complete. Renew met metabolisms of all sorts and all levels. Thank him. Thank him. You're carrying this home with you. It doesn't have to show up immediately. Just... Let the seed be sown and let the fruit now begin to grow. Let it be a fellowship point, thanksgiving. Let it be a place where you look into the word and hear the voice of God over what he said. But in the name of Jesus, there's going to be tangible change in a bunch of lives. Right now. Forever. Forever. Because of the sovereign name of Jesus Christ that liberates his sons and daughters into the freedom that he purchased for them to have. Of salvation, healing, and deliverance of all sorts. So Lord, bless us as we move forward. Bless us in this week that we're about to enter into. Bless us in the Sukkot and then because we are a people of, of, of travel, but we're entering out of the wilderness and into the promise and the completion of that for each one. Thank you for doing it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Come on up for prayer. Go out in your day. We'll see you Wednesday night.